welcome. This is the um, first one on compliance. So um, we're going to look at licenses and compliance. And bear with us. This is just a short introduction. The topic is vast. As you've seen, if you listen to our podcast and or watched our videos, it's it's all about the printing press. Um, from now on, we assume that you're familiar with copyright licenses, free and open source software, and to some extent, patents. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, you can watch our previous videos and podcasts. Yeah, okay. and you can follow the uh, the link up in the corner to find the playlist. So let's begin. First off, we're, we're going to look at making sure that your software, your source code is correct. And um, basically, you, you, you own the copyright of your code, so you can do whatever you want. But it's easier for others to use your software if, if you're making sure that you're fulfilling the licenses, uh, etc. Uh, you don't have to, but you're writing code, I assume, to uh, let others use that. So let's make sure that everyone can use it. So one of the things we need to do, this is something we've looked at before, it's to have some kind of prominent, prominent notice in the source code. So in this case, we're, the example is that the uh, program is called Barfo. So we need to state that and we need to state the license. And we're also making sure that we are putting the copyright holder there. And this is in every file, hopefully at the top and the header. Yeah, there are some formats that makes it hard. In JSON, it's hard. You can probably come up with some kind of uh, JSON object called meta or something, but uh, JSON is not intended for, for the, the for, uh, they don't support comments. But yes, it's good to have it in every file. Also, JSON is uh, not a programming language or anything, it's just a format for data for data structure. yeah but, but in, in, in for example in one of my programs which we're going to look at later uh i use a json to provide like additional information so it's part of the program so it is a bit complex and and also if you have settings uh because that's copyrighted it's it's written it's created by someone so it's well it's it needs to be licensed but you don't have to put it in the license. You you can if you like put a license file somewhere, then it's it's clear that it's uh, licensed on this and that license. It's yeah. sometimes hard, as you can see from this slide. It's intentionally like a wall of text. So if you are using GPLv3, you need to adhere to quite a lot of uh, obligations. And this is just for applying GPL to your code. But I mean, this is like if you want to make it properly by the book and make it super easy for everyone else. For example, uh, the point about LGPL, if you're not using that, then of course you don't need that. And yeah. you, don't, you don't technically need to put a notice in every file. It just makes compliance easier. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. And, but everyone who's been working with compliance have stumbled upon a, a like a program or some uh, like it could be a single file where all of a sudden this file does not have a, a uh, like a proper copyright statement and that or license statement and then it makes me a bit worry working with compliance because it, it could potentially mean that it's contributed by someone didn't want this to be published under this and that license. So uh, having it in every license makes it easier. Yeah. And I mean, it, what it's about is clarity for, for the users. So, uh, so if you look at this from a legal perspective and using open source, it's about making sure that everything is super clear. So just being as explicit as possible helps to, to make it possible to use it in, in various settings. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm sort of like on, on two sides here. I'm working with compliance, but at the same time, I'm releasing programs. And when releasing programs, uh, <laughs> the gut reaction is, I don't care. It's up to me. I, I do it my way. <laughs> but then when, when as part of the compliance work, then I'm frustrated with uh, developers having my attitude. 
<laughs> but it's, it's coming back to what we discussed around the, the previous slide. One way around things like JSON and so on. Uh, I have a project where I have JPEGs that, that I take from an open repository that are permissively licensed. Um, and then I explicitly list them in, in the readme file and saying that these files are licensed under this license. Um, it's a bit more cumbersome, but still making sure that everything is tagged somewhere. That's yeah. super nice. I did the That's same great. for a small game I made as a university project where I had uh, some Creative Commons licensed audio files, I think it was. Um, you can use SPDX um, tags, which makes it easier. Um, and this is part of the SPDX standard. In this case, I'm applying GPL version 3.0 or later. SPDX Next slide. is something that we should uh, that we potentially should speak about in a separate episode, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, let's do that. Standardized license names and so on, but it's it's quite useful. It is absolutely. It's from, we can see especially from machine readability designed for that, isn't it? Yeah, I, I listened to a panel like one and a half year ago, and uh, there's this great guy, Philip Ombredan, who's written a tool called ScanCo. Uh, and he said that in the Linux kernel, there are 700 ways uh, that the GPL v2 is expressed. So there are 700. <laughs> so that's not exactly machine readable. No. But his that's tool true. can read it. That's quite amazing. To make life easier, for example, with SPDX, you can use a tool like Reuse. And currently, in August 2020, there is a, a discussion going on inside the project on the exact thing that you one mentioned before, um, where if, if you want to put a SPDX tag to something where it's not possible to put a SPDX tag. So with reuse, the coming versions, you can do that easily in a special file. It looks as if it's going to be a YAML file. What is, when, what, is what does reuse do? Uh, reuse can do, uh, it can apply the SPDX tag, uh, and it can verify that you have SPDX tags. We actually had a talk on, on reuse from uh, Gabriel from mm -hmm. SFE uh, during the last Foss North. So, so we can put the link up here in the corner. Oh, yeah, that would be great. I think I missed that one. Reuse can also do a couple of other things. I know the developers, so they're going to yell and scream at me if I, I say that it can only apply and verify. So this has been the part where we're looking at how to apply or sure. make sure that we are compliant. Yeah, and, and thanks everyone for listening. And as you might know, we're we're both a pod and a YouTube channel at the moment. Uh, we still appreciate likes and subscribes on the YouTube channel to uh, to reach the critical limit of a thousand subscribers. Last time I checked, we were at four eighty six. I was thinking Pentium right away, uh, <laughs> but we're we're getting there, and we're we're thankful for for everyone helping out there. Also, reach out uh, via. Do we have an email on our website or something? Yeah, we have the info at uh, fos-north.se. Um, so if you have questions or uh, tips and stuff, then please share with us. Yep. Super. See you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.